we're gonna build a site with a background this will not be like your standard boring background this will be fun but classy subtle background that is moving and it's not moving up or to the side it's moving diagonally I think it, it might look nice maybe I should show it to you straight away so you know where we're heading so you can decide if you're gonna stay or if you're gonna click the next video here we have it it's classy I would say how would you describe it comment down below So here's my starting point. We are doing this only in CSS. Um, so I have this HTML file. It has a reference to the style CSS file, which I have here. I import a font and here we have the markup. I'm calling it a modal because it will be a, like a small window that is floating on top of a background. So it will look sort of like a modal. Inside the model we have a top bar that will have three dots that will look sort of like the Mac Close, Minimize, Expand buttons. Just for fun, we won't implement any functionality there. I have an image of myself that will be in the middle of this model and then there will be my name on Twitter actually and a Twitter logo. So for development I will use an npm package called live-server and if you want this globally like I have you can do npm install-g live server and then you can use it like this it will start up a server inside that folder where you run the command and then you can serve to localhost 8080 and here we have it let's get started writing some CSS so let me first mention the CSS variables we have a blackish which is not black but close which looks a lot nicer than the pitch black we have a white ish that is almost white we have a red for the close button a yellow for the minimize a green for the expand we have a background size which is 300 pixels and I will show you the background image that I chose for this shortly. We have some standard body uh, styling. The body should have the full height of the window. We have the font family. The background is blackish and the text is whitish. I suggest we start with a modal. Modal. So for the modal, we need to set a width and a height of it. And here I'm going to introduce the clamp. It's a pretty new property in CSS. And it works like this. I will set the minimum allowed width for this model, which will be 50% of the width. And then we can set what width we want it to have, what it will try to have. And we can set that to half of the height. And then we can set a max value that we allow the modal width to be. And there I would suggest having it 90 of the viewport width, so it won't go all the way out to the borders of the viewport. We can set a height and we can set that to always be uh, half of the height of the viewport. And now we want the model to be dead, dead centered in the viewport. So I will do the shortest possible way that I know how to center things, which is display grid and place items center. Super quick. So do we have anything yet? Yeah, we things are moving around a little bit. We probably need to center also in the body. Because this only centered the items inside the model. That's why we see the avatar image jumping a bit here. So we do the same thing here. 
now something happened. So for this model, we want to have a background of our variable, blackish. We also want it to have some nice border radius since it's floating around. I think if we change the body now to have the background image it will be a lot easier to distinguish where everything is. It's important in this tutorial to use an image that is naturally repeating. Like this one, you can see it ends on half a square, ends on half a square, top and bottom is also lining up to a full square. And that's important. So we use the URL wrapper and paste it. And now we see that we are actually getting the expected layout that we want. So this is our model here. Continue with the avatar because that one is too big at the moment. We can set a width to 100 pixels, a border radius of 50%. So we'll be round, that looks a lot nicer. I think what's really messing up the whole layout is the huge Twitter logo, which is excessively large. It's going to be super small. Twitter logo. Oof. So that sorted things out a bit. So now, where are the dots? I think the problem is that they don't have a width and a height. They're like collapsing. We need, because we want them to be small round dots, small round circles. Let's select the dot. And this should be display inline block to make them take up space but not wrap the other dots to a new line. We set the width to 15 and the height to 15 and then the border radius should be 50. Are they white? Are they black? If you didn't know, the best built-in color in CSS is hot pink, and they are in fact there, but they are aligned weirdly. What we want is for them to align to the left, so I will select the top bar. Was it like that? Top bar. Content. Flex start. And it's probably because the top bar doesn't have a width. So I will give it with 100%. Actually, let's add some margin to the dots. Margin. Let's add some margin up top and, and to the left. That looks better. And now let's fi fix this color. One is red, and then we have background variable red. Grape. That's, that's nice, but now let's make it a little bit nicer. For the avatar, let's add a box shadow. And the box shadow should be no, no X offset. Let's use five pixels for the Y offset and the blur 20 pixels and the spread 10 pixels. And let's make it a bit transparent. So, 0 0.2. There we go. 
There, we have a little shadow. What else? I think the modal should have a shadow as well. Yeah, that looks better. So now it looks a bit more floaty. Now, let's do the fun part. Let's make it move. So we should add a keyframe. Keyframes. And we call it moving background. And it should go from background we can start at zero zero and go to it will go to the background size in both x and y now we have maybe a working keyframe but we're not using it yet we need also to set the background size here to this variable background size. Oh that looks better. Now we have the correct size of the background. So if you want this background to start moving all we have to do is set the animation to moving background. And how long should it take to move 300 pixels? Let's try 5 seconds. It will go linearly and it will continue infinitely. Infinitely. And there we have it. So, if I would want to make it darker now, there is this trick to create a pseudo element on the body. I'm trying to create like a wet blanket that will stay on top of the body but behind the model. So it won't have any content, it will be position absolute with 100%, height 100%, a color of, see it got a bit darker, 0.8, yeah that, that's really dark, so now we need some set index Let's set this to one copy it and we'll set the model to have two there we go now it looks nice and we should also try the mobile oh yeah it looks nice here we can see what happens if we make the browser taller, so we need to justify the content differently so that the image is centered and these are pushed to the top. I think we can do align self flex start, because then the top bar will be pushed to the top, so that looks a lot better. So let's just quickly go through why this works. It's as simple as that this background size lines up with the value of the position where the animation ends. So the animation will restart when the image has moved exactly the same length as the image, if that makes sense. So if I were to if this would not be the same, you would see every fifth second that the background would jump a little bit. Hope you enjoyed it! I will see you next time, and if you do like the content, you could subscribe. Bye!